Hi, I'm Dave Fleming. I'm the Retail Marketing Director for Tetra Pak in the U.S. and Canada, and I'm here to talk about how retail brands can lead innovation and not follow national brands. We think there's four key drivers to do that. These are, one, engineering value, two, expanding mainstream ranges, three, making premium more special, and four, interacting with shoppers. Re-engineering the value equation. Private Label has owned the price side of the value equation for many years. We think it's time to think about the benefit side of the value equation. Improve product quality, improve packaging, and really improve brand equity so consumers can see the full value of a value line of private label. Well, some of the research that we've done at Nielsen around uh, low price products and lower tiered uh, is that there are people out there who shop at Aldi, shop a save a lot because they really like it and because they do see great value out of those value tiered private brands. In certain categories, uh, packaging plays a much more important role than others as to how consumers decide which product to go with and which product not to go with. And in some cases, what can differentiate one product from another, at the end of the day, it's not even, it's not the product itself, but it's the packaging form that, or format that it comes in. Secondly, expanding the mainstream segment. An example of this is umbrella brands, which are targeted to a specific consumer, specific use and occasion, or a specific category. We've seen this a lot with pet food, baby, and kids' products. This really allows you to differentiate from national brands and build brand equity. If I was asked, do I want my name on all different commodities in my store, my answer would be no. Just like Sears trying to put Craftsman on a donut wouldn't make any sense at all. To me, one of the most impressive things we've seen around natural is more related to the simple truth or simple uh, movement that uh, Kroger has their Simple Truth Organic. Uh, uh, Target has uh, Simply Balanced. That's around fewer ingredients, less preservatives, more natural. That's catching on with shoppers in very interesting ways and, and retailers are doing a pretty good job of, of connecting with shoppers digitally. Third, making premium special. If you think about the economy, we have an hourglass economy right now. There's the growth on the value end, but also on the premium end. Consumers are looking for premium products. Retailers can experiment and innovate with high-end products and take risk and draw consumers in. Affluent customers, people who have discretionary income, there's a lot fewer of them now than there were at the beginning of the recession, but there still are a lot of people who have spending money. What they really want is a product that tells a story. They, want to, they, don't, they don't want to buy milk. They want to buy milk uh, from a farm that's nice, that doesn't despoil the environment, where the cows are treated humanely and um, where the employees are treated well. Uh, they don't want to buy eggs. They want to buy eggs from free-range chickens that are fed organic food. In a sense, they want products that reinforce their idea of themselves as humane and responsible individuals. Fourth, connecting with shoppers. Retailers have a significant advantage in this territory. If they have insights and information about their shoppers that national brands don't have. For example, in Europe, where private label has a significant market share, many retailers are connecting with their shoppers to help design and innovate new products. The great ones have a structured demo program, 60 hours a week, 80 hours a week, whatever it is, it's structured, it's four hours a day, seven hours on Fridays and Saturdays, whatever it is, structured. And part of that demo, every demo, would be a comparison. Oh, by the way, over here we have our chip against that chip. When you have an innovative new item that's new and you know, if the brands aren't doing it, because, you know, usually you do knock off a brand, but if the brands aren't doing it, you have to let the consumer know it's there. Retail brands are expected to continue to grow market share in the coming decades. It's still be determined who will grow share and who will lose share. We think these four factors will help determine who will succeed.